I began this poem after watching a meteor shower in Wyoming several years ago. Lying on my back that summer night, I recalled an elementary school trip I took with my class to a planetarium in Philadelphia. The poem took off from there. Writing it, I almost felt as though I was chasing it down. Southwestern imagery dominates the sensory elements, while the shift from innocence to experience holds the poem together thematically. Something to think about. In what ways do we connect with our younger or more innocent selves in the natural world or with animals? The Star Show. Though we're flat on our backs at midnight under the enormous sky, I know I'm really in the Fells Planetarium in Philadelphia, where I've come with the other third graders for the star show. Tonight, the trailing blazes of white explode across the darkness like firecrackers, and my companions ooh and point and say, over there, though the words are too late to be of use and hang in the air much longer than light. What I remember about the star show is the commentator's calm voice, the miracle spreading overhead as he wooed us in plain English, as if he didn't need special gear to show us the sky's mysteries. He needed only the reclining seats, the artificial ceiling shuddering close with its countless stars. Our willingness to leave the known earth our parents, teachers, friends, ourselves, for this uncertain meeting in the dark. He urged us to let our eyes adjust for the journey. He asked us to relax as the room began to spin, and he whispered in his knowledgeable voice about Jupiter. Like my rabbi appearing suddenly in the dome to discuss Moses, he explained with sorrow that brilliant Galileo had to retract his scientific conclusions before the Inquisition. This made us sad, for we already knew that Galileo was right, that four stars revolved around Jupiter as the Earth revolved around the Sun. And then, as though someone were shaking out a bedspread, someone shook the sky and all the stars shifted. It was winter, night of the lean wolf. His voice grew cold and we buttoned our sweaters because the temperature was falling and we wanted to follow him wherever he was going, which was December. Across the mountain passes we hunted bear. With the Hopis, we cured buffalo hides and predicted the hour of sunrise. Who didn't want to linger on that winter mesa with the spotted ponies so close to the stars? There wasn't time. He was galloping towards summer while I sat weeping for what I'd lost, a glimpse of the sadness to come, the astronomer's sure purpose. He guided the constellations from early spring to June, and then the sun rose higher than we thought possible, and the longest day endured. He brought us into a meadow drenched with light, but it was night, we knew it, for now we could name every star. How could he leave us here now that we had become his, now that he had asked us to learn his heaven? As the chairs began to tilt, he threw the stars across the sky, flung meteors carelessly and laughed a grown-up's laugh. He punctured the darkness with white bullets. The seats fell forward and the sun rose in the auditorium, warming the air. I sat bereft before the retreating stars. Row by row, we stood and blinked into that autumn afternoon as the ordinary jeers and curses filled our mouths.